let's look a little bit at uh, the data. Let's start, maybe it's nice weather today to go for a cruise. Do you know that at the beginning, John II of uh, Portugal was uh, very enthusiastic about Christopher Columbus when he came to say, could you fund my trip to go to China and India westward? And well, he went to speak with the, his uh, techie guys, you know, those drawing maps and making calculation, all the experts, and to say, what do you think of that? And they say, no, sir, the best way, the most efficient way to go to China and India is eastward. So it's not because they believed that the Earth was flat. No, they knew it was round and they had made calculation. So they looked at the data. They said the best way is eastward. That's how Portuguese developed their economic and trade presence in Asia very successfully, if I can say, and looking at the data. So it's what we're going to try to see today, how looking in a critical way at the data, and not only the rankings, but any kind of data can help to engage globally, strategically. So first, yeah, going behind the data. Which kind of data shall we start with? Let's forget a little bit about the rankings. Let's look at joint research. What is joint research? This is the research happening effectively between researchers from different institutions, from oftentimes different countries. It's what is happening between researchers. But it doesn't mean that the institutions are able to map it or to be aware of it at the institutional level. And yet, and such database as Scopus or others, which are comprehensive, are a wonderful source of data for institutions. This map shows you joint collaboration over the last six years between Lithuanian uh, institutions and the rest of the world. And we see the number of uh, publications, and the second figure is the number of citations. So let's look at how Lithuania is engaging, effectively has engaged over the last six years in terms of research. Germany, United States, United Kingdom, Poland, Italy, Spain, France, Russian Federation. Let's look into details and we see that by faculty area, the map is a little bit different. And where Germany, for instance, United States and United Kingdom are overall, and then you see, according to different areas, art and humanities, engineering and technology, uh, life science and medicine, natural science, and social sciences and management. So it tells you already how effectively your researchers are engaged in research overseas. Now, let's look for Latvia. Different kind of engagement. Top three are Germany, Russia, and Lithuania. And then we see, again, different top three according to the faculty areas. Estonia. Finland, Germany, United Kingdom. So the top three is different again. And it shows how, how being engaged in the world for Estonia through its research. This is something happening on the ground. Looking at the joint research is essential not starting from scratch, global engagement. Let's look at something different, something we love looking at 
in QS, the academic reputation. Reputation is not who you are. It's how you're perceived. Sometimes nice surprises, sometimes it's cruel, but it's the, the perspective. So let's look at some maps. Lithuania, already a different map. And when we look at the top three, it's different from research. Russia, Latvia, Poland. In the same way, let's look for Latvia, where our nomination, this recognition is coming from. Lithuania, Russia, and Kazakhstan. Important, these are absolute figures, that is, it's in number of nominations, and I'm going to come back to that. What is the case now about Estonia? Lithuania, Russia, Latvia. Where is Germany into all of that? That was the main country in terms of joint research. So you see Lithuania, Russia, Latvia. Well, you could tell me, and maybe my friend Mark could tell me, Jacques, you're using absolute figures. And we know that country like Russia, we love we love Russia for that, and not only for that, in QS or Kazakhstan are participating a lot in QS survey, which is great. So let's look at something different, which is the depth of recognition. And depth of recognition means we're looking at all the responses, for instance, in favor of Lithuania over all the respondents in arts and humanities. We look at the depth of recognition per country. And the top three are Latvia, Estonia, and Ukraine for Lithuania in terms of depth of recognition. The same picture for Latvia, depth of recognition, Lithuania, Estonia, and Ukraine. And depth of recognition for Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and Ukraine. So you see, which data you're looking at and how you're looking at gives you a lot of information. Reputation is your footprint in terms of not who you are, but how you're being perceived. And this perception is crucial in the decision-making process of your interlocutors. Now let's look at something different. When engaging globally, it was not the case at the time of King John II. He didn't have a smartphone, but now you have a smartphone. So he would have said, oh, China, India, the first thing he would have gone on Google to see, oh, what's happening and to get things. Online presence is essential. First proxy, let's look at the Wikipedia views. That is when looking at the English pages of different universities. He, here, those universities chosen have been those of the three Baltic countries that are in QS World University rankings. And you see their English page, the views, how they are, University of Tartu being the main one, the main Lithuanian Vilnius University in terms of views. And then there is the University of, uh, of Latvia in terms of views, not of your Wikipedia page, of your English Wikipedia page. Because and it's a matter of a big sorrow for France. International language in this day and age, lingua franca is not French, because there was Waterloo. It's English. So your presence in the English language is crucial. If you don't have an English website in this day and age, you don't have a online presence globally. Now let's look again, let's play with that different source of data, and let's look at your uh, um, web traffic, Alexa web traffic, and on the y-axis we look at the international views. For instance, we've taken as benchmark two US universities, Harvard and MIT, and Cambridge and Oxford. <clears throat> so the more you are on the right, the more views you have, and the higher you are, 
the more international your viewers are. So that, for instance, Vilnius University has a lot of viewers, but overwhelmingly domestic. Tallinn University is less viewers, but much more international views. Again, it gives you an indication, a precious indication about the behavior, the online behavior <coughs> of uh, your viewers. So a lot of data. Looking at all these data, squeezing those data, data you can find in the fact files, in other sources from different origin, and now how to engage and uh, using this data but going beyond it. First of all, you forget about the data. You just forget about it. You don't ask the data who we are. You have to identify yourself as a university, your distinctiveness. You don't want Vito Tas Magnus University to say, we want to be the MIT uh, of, uh, of Europe. Maybe you want the opposite. You have to be more yourself. You don't have, you have to think and to bring the institution together around this notion. Then you map and you assess your existing, existing global footprint and then you can engage strategically. So identify and unify. As I was saying, you forget about the data, saying in which subjects are we good or not. No, first, you have to think who we are. Because you can be in a competition status quo. You say, OK, students are coming to this university because we are number 34 in ICA, and they were not accepted in university number 33 or 32 in ICA. No. They're coming and they say, I want to come in this university. I've been accepted in MIT, but I don't care about MIT because what is being taught here is unique, and this is a, how I want to make a difference in the world. What is my distinction? And to communicate effectively around who you are. <clears throat> and you have to build a strategy to become competitive and to, um, to build this distinctiveness. Crucial. Once you have defined this, you have what we call in marketing uh, uh, jargon, unique value proposition. As one institution, one identity, you have one strategy and you communicate. Where is your biggest enemy? This is not the oppos uh, opposition in exile, as we say in the famous English TV show, Yes, Minister. This is the opposition in residence, empires, silos don't have internal wars. You are one uh, institution and you have to conquer the world <clears throat> in terms of distinction, of course, as being one institution and with a very efficient PR and promotion uh, office coordinating strategically. This is essential. Then, and as we've been looking before, we look at the data. We look, as I said, at who you are. We map all the practices, the existing practices in the university, including the partnerships, and we compare them with, as we said, the performance, the existing reputation, what we call the international footprint, the joint research, the online visibility. <clears throat> we benchmark. It's always good to benchmark. Benchmark does not mean copying. It's just to look at what others are doing in terms of best practices. And from this, comparing the data you've used with your practices and your identity, you can start thinking about <coughs> building this um, uh, global strategy. And then you, how do you engage strategically once you have this strategy, and which is, of course, something which is dynamic? First, <coughs> very important, you have to think big and not being limited by history or geography. This is essential. We have always done like this. Our traditional partners, all these kind of things, no. You have to think big. The world is possible and you don't, and you don't have to be burdened by legacy. You have to understand <clears throat> that you need to engage, as we say, strategically 
in an innovative way, not to be afraid of internal resistance, it's inevitable, and of people to say, oh, we've always done like this, so why should we change? This is never, no, you have to think big, and if you want to engage more strategically, you need to have some change in your way of engaging with the world beyond your uh, practice. <coughs> Essential, you have to establish flagship partnerships. You don't, we can sign 300 MOUs, 400 MOUs. Signing an MOU is a pleasant thing. You drink a glass of Prosecco, of Champagne, of vodka, anything, it's a great moment, but was it an MOU? Is that a dusty thing without content? No. You must make sure that it's a strategic document and you will put things in it. It has to be dynamic, you have to revise it, you need to have <coughs> KPIs and essential partnerships of equals. You don't need to be a partner with a university, you're going to beg their favor, their attention, no. If you're not important to them, they're not important to you. You just say no. The partnership must be meaningful to them, and then it will be meaningful to you. You don't need too, too many partnerships. You have to use them. They will be your best source of promotion, and they will help you to develop original pr presence. St not partnership, but flagship partnerships. A few of them, but a way to be strategically present in more and more regions of the world. And last thing, as we mentioned, the importance of the presence, and, and all, especially the online presence. What we call thought leadership. What is thought leadership is when about a topic, people know I need to go on this website because they are a specialist of something. They are the authority I should look at. What does it mean concretely? You have to showcase, for instance, your research. How your research is important to the world. For people who are not interested in university, in anything but in their field, start discovering who you are and that you are an authority in their field of interest. And naturally, people will <coughs> come to you seeing that you're a go-to go -to authority in these areas you're interested in and important, all hands on deck. So you see, to engage strategically, you need to go, you need to have an idea of how you want to go and where to go. The data is never going to tell you that. You are the helm, the data is not. But the data will be essential for you to know whether you want <coughs> To, to go westward or eastward. Thank you very much.